we know him as a movie director, producer, television director and producer, and also a teacher. Um, his name is Romel Hall, and Romel has the distinct opportunity of um, spending some time in that wonderful country known as China. And right now it's dark and really, really late there because it's like 12 hours ahead of us. So it's this time, yeah. but in the night time. So Romel, welcome. Thank yeah. you so much for um, you know taking up a little bit of your sleep to spend with us. Good to see you. Yeah, staying up way past my staying up way past my bedtime. Yes, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, eleven forty seven um in the PM. Yeah. So it. that's yes. strange. <laughs> What's it like? What's China like to live in? Um I would say let me just say firstly that China is a largely misunderstood country. Um, myself personally, I had a lot of preconceived notions about China. Those were all destroyed when I went to uh um, a conference last year, and it completely blew my mind. The, the number one, the sheer scale of everything that happens in in, in China is just is just mind blowing, and the speed at which everything works at, and the efficiency. And I would say, largely, China gets a bad rap on the western side of the world because of various things, which I don't want to get into politics and yeah. all kind of different things. But largely, I tell this to people all the time. Pre-COVID-19, China was a beautiful experience. Um, there was, they, where, where I am in Shanghai is very cosmopolitan. There are a lot of foreigners here. Um, because for hundreds of years, Shanghainese were accustomed to Lao Wei or foreigners being in Shanghai. So whereas in certain cities in China, I would be a spectacle because people don't really see black people up close often and they would stare or take pictures sometimes subtly or sometimes not so subtly. In Shanghai, oh my goodness. people people don't care. Like, like, I would be in the subway and hundreds of people in the subway and I'm just invisible. I, I tell this to people and only people that live in Asian countries really understand this, but, and it's a little funny to say this because especially in the current climate that we are in in terms of black lives, but sometimes it's, diff it's easy to forget that you're a black person in China because there's nobody there's nobody following you around there no, there's no suspicion police are friendly i mean it's it just it was just a beautiful experience it's just now with covid19 um a little more precautions are being taken but living in china is 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 a, it was a beautiful experience well so okay you brought it up tell us about covid19 um because of course yeah and we're not going into the whole politics of it and so on not not right now but mm -hmm your right. personal experience um what was what was your covid-19 journey like well the the interesting thing is that i had actually booked a flight to come into barbados right when it was starting to pick up in china and i left barbados i left china sorry just before china was shut down and then i went back to china just before they blocked foreigners from coming in so I started to escape the worst, but from being in Barbados and seeing what was happening in China at the time, I was really impressed with the level of um, how, again, how quickly things were. These guys built two hospitals in 10 days, you know. Um, yeah. You, had, you, have, you have a city, Shanghai is a city of um, 24 million people, and you have 670 something cases of COVID-19. Why? Because they were extremely proactive. So the neighborhoods were closed. You could not, you could only leave your neighborhood. Everybody, every household was given a card. You could only leave your household three times a week for important things, groceries, for medication, and to go, if you had to go to the hospital. You could not leave hope your home for anything else and then as things started to open up there were there was an app that a health app so you have a health code every time you get on a bus or a train or go into a public space you have to scan this qr code before you enter and what happens is that if somebody on the bus or the train or wherever tests positive for covid19 then you get a notification on your app or oh, you got you came into contact with somebody you have to quarantine 
So the app has three colors, green, yellow, and red. And well, mine is green right now. Um, green is you're free to walk around. Yellow, you have to be quarantined. Or red is when you have been tested positive for COVID-19. But generally, no, things have started to open up in Shanghai. I tell people all the time because the Chinese are very disciplined. Um, you didn't see Chinese out in the, the street with guns saying, I want a haircut. When the government said, shut it down, they shut down, they stayed home. And because of that, they were able to reopen walking around. Um, things are opening up. I'm seeing a lot of people walking around without masks. I personally am not that brave as yet. Actually, last week, my wife was, was had a little fun at my expense. Hi, Karen. Um, I left home and I <laughs> left home to, to take out my garbage because I live in a high rise community and there's an area that you carry your garbage and people sort it for you. Well, you sort it and then they, they disperse it for you. And I was so, I was so, in such a hurry to get down to the garbage because the, the, the collection ends at eight o'clock at night. I forgot to put on a mask. So when I got downstairs and then I said, you know what, let me pop across to the convenience store and pick up some groceries quick. And I was about to leave the community and I was like, wait a minute, I'm not wearing my mask. Ah! And they ran back inside. But the thing <laughs> is, there are so many people walking around without masks. It was not like if people were looking at me like, oh, look at this weird foreigner not wearing a mask. There are so many people not wearing masks. But I personally am not that brave yet <laughs> to walk around without a mask. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. These stories are, you know, just that stories because you're not experiencing yeah. it yourself. Um, so I yes. am sure that then the reality is something completely different. But I am fascinated, yes. though, by that that QR code thing in Bob. I mean, we're talking, you know, how many billion um, in China? Uh, you one know, point, one point four billion. Well, the, the QR code go. that is because of Shanghai specifically. So that's that's uh, ah, trying to get okay. Like, okay. twenty four million people. So each city mm -hmm. has its own code. Right. Um, and the thing is, when I talk to people about the app, the first thing people say, oh, but well, that's another way for the government to spy you. That is not how people think. People think, you know what, the government is trying to keep us safe. You know, uh, and that's mm -hmm. one of the things I relate about here. There's not the whole set of suspicion. Generally speaking, people believe that the government has the country's best interests at heart and their citizens' best interests at heart. And you can see from the chat record that they are doing things to make sure that people are safe and they are very quick about things and they're trying their best not to let a resurgence happen and there are different things that have been put in place to ensure the safety of the citizens okay now in your teaching so yes. that means that you are utilizing the technology a lot um how is mm -hmm. that working out you know teaching and 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 the technology I, it's okay. Um, I really, really miss my students um, because um, I was here since July and teaching like, normally in classes and everything. And um, then now we have to be online. So it's like a, you have to shift and you have to um, change how you speak. And because of how teaching is done here, where things are very physical, it's not a lot of chalk and talk. You have to be doing a lot of activities and stuff to get to keep the children interested because I teach my students range from the ages of four to seven. So they have a very short attention span. And because of that, I have to be using flashcards and leaping around the classroom like a madman and having them chase <laughs> me with toy hammers. To, 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 you know, if we have certain target vocabulary words, I would hold up the card and I would hold up two cards and I would say, OK, which one is ant and which one is axe? And they would have to chase me to hit the the axe and, and different things. So <laughs> that was fun. That was a lot of fun. But mm -hmm. then now I have to try to have that same energy <laughs> talking to my students <laughs> like this. And it's, it's difficult. It's really difficult. But um, things are opening up. And we should be going back to the classrooms in the next couple of weeks. Um, so, yes. yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And what is the talk in the international community about all that's happening in the West, specifically the U.S.? Um, generally speaking, there there are a lot of people talking about it uh, in terms of black people. Um, but we have been watching very closely and seeing what's been happening. Um, for my one part, I am I I'm really saddened by what's happening in the United States, and this is even before the whole thing with the systemic racism, but I was more focusing on how the, the, the virus was taking over the country 
and it's really sad yeah. to see how things have really taken a turn for the worse over there and i really hope that that things could um become well i don't know if we'll ever go back to normal but i really hope that mm. we'll get to a point where the usa will see the back of this the usa and the uk specifically will see the back of this but we have been watching the the black community in china have been watching closely and we are seeing everything and we're supporting from over here thank you very much ramel and you want to take this opportunity to say hi i know you want to say hi to karen for sure but um anyone you want to shout out and let them know you're fine you can go right ahead yeah um yeah i was obviously saying hello to my wife hi karen um and all my friends uh, so my friends are tuning in um jason my friend jason my former jogging jogging buddy um fighting fat together and my mom my mom is supposed to be watching and my family so hi to everybody back in barbados i'm fine i'm safe i'm well exercising trying to keep the weight down and everything so everything yeah is i'm good. noticing i'm yeah. noticing you can see it congratulations and writing i yeah. hope um we we'll hopefully be seeing some more keeping up with the joneses fingers crossed <sighs> we'll see okay <laughs> Okay. Let's see. okay. I, I would say well, that I'm working on something right now, but that's that's a little under the that's under the radar. All right. right Understood. <laughs> well, we can only live. It. I'm a very positive person, so I will continue. I will continue to hope. But thank you so much, Romel. You stay you. safe and you stay well. All right. Okay. Um, thank and you. we will try and get this um, connection going again, even though the 12 hour distance. Yeah. No, pro no problem. <laughs> All right, love. You take care.